Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our second session tonight in the Chakra Balancing Series. Let me just pull up my phone so I can um, see your comments. Let me know when you're here. Say hello. Let me just turn the volume down on this. Just a little delay. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, hold on a second. All right, I think it looks like we're good. Hi, everyone. Are you excited for tonight? I am so excited. This is one of my um, favorite chakras to talk about the sacral. So how have you been doing with the root chakra? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Karen. Hi, Tammy. All right. Um, Woohoo! All right. So this is session number two of our seven part chakra balancing series. Um, hopefully all of you attending tonight participated in session number one, um, whether you watched it live with me or you um, watched the replay. I know a lot of you have to watch the replay, you know, given um, time zones and, and all of that. So for those of you that have been doing the root chakra, leave me a comment below. If you've been activating every day this past week, have you noticed a difference? How are you feeling? I hope you're you're feeling some change and transformation just um, from practicing um, the first week so far. So I'm so excited to share the sacral chakra activation process with you tonight. So um, hi, Kathy. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Tara. Welcome, welcome. So I hope you guys are excited. Just um, let me know in the comments if you've been doing the root chakra um, and how that's been going for you. I want to know how you're feeling. So tonight I will share with you some of the characteristics of the sacral chakra, the second chakra. And we'll talk about how to determine, you know, how to um, some indications, some characteristics to determine if your sacral chakra is imbalanced. And then I'll talk about which specific essential oils that I really like, <laughs> that I prefer for, for balancing and harmonizing the sacral chakra. And um, we'll talk about that relationship between the chakra energy of the sacral and how those essential oils can help bring it back into, into balance. Um, so I'm ex so excited for this tonight and I hope you are. Okay, good. Let me see some of your comments. Um, yes. Awesome. Courtney. Yes. Thank you. I've been seeing your posts about it. Courtney says it's been amazing. Tara said, yes, really good. Good. Tammy says definitely feeling more grounded. Awesome. Yeah. So please, please, please. If you're just catching this for the first time tonight, you're watching this replay and you're like, Whoa, you just kind of stumbled upon it. That happens. Please make sure you go back in the event on this page. Um, and catch up and watch week one. These are going to progress, you know, progress from week to week. And I'm not going to, you know, regurgitate the same information every week. And I really laid the foundation in week one about in depth about the chakras and how they work and about how essential oils work um, and how to choose your essential oils. So if you have questions about all that, like the basics about chakra balancing and how to use essential oils, please go back and watch week one. I outlined all of that there. So tonight we're going to kind of dig right in um, to the sacral chakra in just a moment. But first I want to remind you, for those of you who show up every week of this seven week series, I got a little gift. I'm giving away to three people. So I have three little sets here of chakra. Um, oops getting my finger caught in it here. Um, chakra stones. Can you see them? So this little set. Yeah, there you go. A little, a little um, chakra balancing crystal set that I got these little tumbled stones for you. And I have three sets of those. Um, so you're going to get those for the, for the enhancement part of the activate process, which I'll talk about tonight. Um, and you're going to get an affirmation card. These are going to end up um, actually being laminated 
So I'm going to have one for every chakra for you. Okay. This is mine from my solar plexus, actually. <laughs> um, but I'll have that for you for every chakra, laminated, printed. And I'm making a spray, um, an energetic protection spray for you. So after you do this process, you can kind of spray it around you before you go out for the day um, to protect your energy field, to protect your chakras and your aura. So it's going to have um, white angelica and um, frankincense and, and be infused with some energy healing and some other things to, to help you. Okay, so that that's going to be the gift for three people who show up. So you can either uh, participate live, um, those of you here tonight, or um, on the replay. Okay, so I will go back through all seven videos, all seven weeks to see um, whose name was in the comments. So make sure you comment, make sure you participate each week. So I know you're here. I know you're participating. You're engaged. <laughs> you're doing this work. Um, because I want to reward you. Like if you show up every week, I know that you are into this, right? You are here for yourself. You're showing up for yourself. You're doing this work. And I want to give you some tools to help you to further this. Sound good? Who wants to win one of the, <laughs> one of the gift sets? Um, so that's the deal. All right. So tonight, well, let me just quick. I know um, there's actually a whole bunch of new people that joined the group this week. And um, so if you don't know who I am. My my name's Andrea. I'm a, I, I, I'm the founder and I facilitate this group as well as the Healer Within Academy and the Inner Child Inner Circle. And I am a holistic coach, energy healer, a Reiki master. And um, I really want to help you create the life you truly want by integrating um, your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of yourself and restoring balance. Um, and harmony <laughs> in your life in the in these four parts of yourself. So I do that through through different techniques, like I'm sharing with you tonight, in workshops like this, through coaching and Reiki sessions, um, as well as in the academy in the inner child inner circle. So I share with you um, processes, like I'm gonna like like tonight, and then specific tools, right? So energy balancing tools like essential oils and crystals and affirmations and meditation um, and visualization. That's kind of my jam, <laughs> my favorite things. I've used many tools over the past 15 years on this journey. And um, I, I've come back to some of the, the seminal ones that I've gotten the, the greatest results from. So as I was working to heal and overcome fibromyalgia, um, I learned various techniques that I've implemented and practiced. And now I'm just passionate about sharing what I've learned and um, with others. So you can implement it in your life and you can really transform and heal any part of your life and learning about the chakras and learning about your energy body. If this is something new to you, you're just dropping in tonight, please go back and watch session one. I talk in um, session one. So, all right. Um, Oh, uh, I hope I'm not freezing up. This my internet's looking a little unstable right now. Hopefully you can still see and hear me. Give me a all right. Let me know. Uh can you guys still hear me and see me? Looks like my screen froze. All right. So you may have um noticed lately, in the past, I'd say, you know, five to ten years. Um, really since 2012, really, there's been this real big shift um, in more and more people really awakening and becoming more aware of their energy body and looking for more, you know, holistic and natural solutions for health and wellness. You, It may seem like um, people working with essential oils has like exploded in the past several years. Um, I really think that, you know, all of these different uh, complementary and holistic practices are really catching on and people are are interested and excited to learn more. And I think that's just going to be the case um, even more so <laughs> moving forward, which is very exciting. So, you know, when you're, when we're talking about energy and, you know, therapeutic essential oils that I'll talk about tonight, quality matters. You know, there's not a lot of regulations when it comes to certain um, supplements and essential oils. So you have to just be really, um, do your due diligence when choosing these, 
um, even with the food you eat, you know, when you think about when you go to the store, buying a loaf of white processed bread, uh, thinking of the energy and the frequency of that, that you're putting into your body versus buying like organic whole grain bread, <laughs> preferably maybe from your local farmer's market or a healthier, you know, store. It's going to have a different effect on you, on your energy, on your frequency, your, your vibration. Okay. So will the quality of oils you use. So some people might try essential oils and say, oh, they didn't really work for me. Well, they might be getting like crappy cheap oils from the store that are not going to have the same. And last week I talked about vibrational frequency. So if you're like, what, what is she talking about? Make sure you go back and watch that. Some, you know, some oils in the store will say natural or pure on them. And they really fool people. If you're not, you know, digging deep and looking at what's actually in it, how is it harvested? How is it distilled? What temperature, all of that, you know? So that's all I, I just wanted to give that little preface before we get started. And just to recap, last week I talked about the chakras, um, but just to give a quick overview, they are what circulate our life force energy. Um, and I'll just put a picture up while I'm talking. You guys really enjoyed these um, photos <laughs> last time. So I'll share these again. Whoops. Mm, there we go. All right. So the chakras um, in this life force energy comes from the divine, or you can call it God or Jesus, whomever your higher power is that you believe in. This is holds all the universal wisdom that we have access to. So our natural state is very intuitive and creative and full of this vital life force energy. And all of these qualities are within us, but we get so busy and in our stressful lives, it can be really easy to forget about this wisdom that we have access to that is within us all the time. So when our chakras are, are cleared and healed, we're able to commune with the divine, with our higher power, whomever that maybe for you, to receive this guidance and support for our life, for our highest good. So whether it's time for you to make a positive change in your life, or you just want to restore balance and move through some blocks that you feel you're holding on to, these techniques can help you, can really support you. So clearing and healing your, sh your chakras will allow more of this life-giving, life force energy to flow through the core of your body along the access um, along your spinal cord. So through healing these centers, you will become more awakened, more alive, and have the ability to transform your life and the world. <laughs> so techniques that I mentioned to you can really transmute the blocks within your sacral chakra, which we're specifically focusing on tonight to really help you reach your full potential, to help you achieve higher levels of expression and creativity and physical well-being and more. Okay, so the sacral chakra. I'm gonna give you a quick overview if you're not as familiar with the sacral. So as I mentioned last week, there's seven main energy centers. And the second one, as you see here, um, is the sacral. So it's located a couple of inches below the navel near, you know, right above the pelvis area. And it vibrates a bit faster than the root chakra, which we talked about last week. So it appears to be a vibrant shade of orange when it's, when it's circulating um, in a healthy way. And it's related to the element of water. Okay, so last week we talked about the root, which was earth element, which was more solid and stable and grounding. And this is more fluid. Okay, so the sacral is really connected with our ability to enjoy all the physical pleasures of life. It's responsible for our overall well being, our sense of deservingness, right? Feeling worthy. Do you feel that you're deserving of all the good things life has to offer? Or do you have blocks in that area? Do you feel like maybe you're not worthy of some things that you truly want in your heart? So this will determine the extent to which you're able to receive pleasure and abundance, the state of health of your sacral. It also represents, um, you know, our ability as women, well, and men, male reproductive organs as well, but the physical reproduction and 
so birth of a human being, but also birth of um, creativity of ideas. So all of our creative expression comes from the sacral chakra. So if you've ever felt stuck or blocked creatively, it has to do with the health of this chakra. So it's also connected, you know, as I said, the flow of our creativity, but also our emotional tides, right? The emotions. So when you think of water, like the tides ebb and flow. So this chakra is influenced by all of your ideas about pleasure and how you perceive your own sexuality as well. Let me um, just put up another, let me see. If I have... Yeah, here's another one. Um, does that show up? Let me just see. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So this is, um, so the sacral, you know, when, when, um, a positive, if you have a positive and a really healthy and a wholesome um, attitude about your sexuality can really help you establish more fulfillment, more joy, and a deep loving relationship with another person. So whenever there's a block in your sacral, some non-physical, some physical signs can manifest as well as some non-physical signs. So if we're not allowing pleasure and well-being, we can build up a lot of frustration. And this may be due to lack of joy, lack of love, lack of creative expression, lack of um, sexual expression, or lack of money. So focusing on gratitude and being grateful for what you have can release a lot of this expression. Okay. Now, some of the physical things that manifest, especially in, uh, in women, um, are fibroids, uterine fibroids, or in your ovaries endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, menstrual or menopausal like real issues, problems with that, ovarian cyst or cancer, ovarian cancer, trouble conceiving. So um, some of you have heard my story, but about 15, 16 years ago, I had um, two large grapefruit sized cysts on each of my ovaries, okay? I just started teaching at the time. I think I maybe was going into my third year of teaching. Um, I was supposed to go in the hospital. I was supposed to go in like, an, what do they call it? An in and out procedure, right? Like you're supposed to go in and be home that day. So I was supposed to have laparoscopy to go in and remove these cysts. I had no idea like really what was going on. I lived in South Carolina at the time. I didn't really have family around me. So I just went in thinking, oh, this could be a piece of cake. Turns out when they went in, they realized the cysts were the size of grapefruits. They didn't know that from the regular ultrasound. So I had to um, basically have like a C-section cut <laughs> and I had no idea. So I woke up, I was under anesthesia and I was in so much pain. Long story short, I was in the hospital for like five days. I was in so much pain. The recovery was horrible. That's when I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. But at the time, I had no idea about chakras, about my sacral chakra. I didn't even know what the sacral chakra was. <laughs> you know, this is like 16 years ago. And um, so I just did all the traditional things, was trying to heal at a physical level. And um, it was much later that I learned this connection um, <laughs> about my energy body and what I'll talk about in a minute where the inner child is resides in our sacral chakra. Okay. So um, if any of you can relate to any of those physical issues, give me a thumbs up or type in the comments if you've had any of those um, that I mentioned. And in men, it can also show up as prostate problems or prostate cancer. Um, sexual dysfunction, inflammatory bowel disease, colitis, Crohn's disease, um, diverticulitis, uh, um, chronic low back pain, bladder infections, or urinary problems. So you can see um, it's all connected um, to those surrounding organs in this um, area. So probably most importantly, and those of you, how many of my friends here are in the inner child inner circle? Where are you at? Um, the sacral chakra governs our emotions. Last week I talked about the root chakra governing our physical body. So it's connected to, you know, our um, musculoskeletal, our, our bones and our blood and just our physical, well, you know, 
well-being and our presence here on earth. And our sacral um, is, as I mentioned, we have the emotional flow, the emotional tide. So it governs our emotions. So this is where our inner child resides. And our inner child is like a little old sponge. And I just want to clarify real quick. Um, okay, I see some of the comments coming in. Um, yes, Florence, the sacral is just below the navel. Above the navel is the solar plexus. Um, Courtney says she struggled with infertility and perimenopausal. Yep. Yes. And I'm sorry to hear that, Courtney. Uh, it's very difficult and it can definitely be connected to the state of health of, I mean, there could be many of other things going on too. So this is just looking at it through one lens and one aspect. But when you start working on recognizing this the connection between the chakra and these issues um, and the connection to your surrounding organs, you can really be intentional about making change <laughs> and, and doing some things to improve these issues. Um, what was I just going to say? I went off track when I started reading your comments. Oh, the inner child. So when I use the term the inner child, I just want to clarify some people and um, some people that do inner child healing work really break it up in between ages, like the inner child and then the adolescent and then the early adult. I lump all these into one term for simplicity. And when I'm referring to the inner child, I'm, I am referring to that adult child self too, and even early adults. I shared in the inner child inner circle with the members that our brain is not even fully developed until we're 26. And you know, that's when I was, I went through this surgery that I just told you about and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. So I feel like we're like this little sponge. So I just use that blanket term inner child. Um, you know, we're absorbing, we're holding all these unresolved emotions, right? We think now our adult self is the one controlling our life. We think we're driving the ship, but we're not. <laughs> our inner child is in our subconscious. So they're the ones really that are in control. Okay. And we can, will continue to be until we learn how to connect with them, repair our relationship and become a loving, responsible parent to our inner child. And our inner child is within this area, predominantly in our sacral chakra. So we have to help them safely release any unexpressed emotions toxic emotions that have built up for years and 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 years. <laughs> okay. And safely release these, or they're going to continue to show up and sabotage our life and make us feel like it's like one step forward, two steps back all the time. And once you've reconnected and begun this healing process, you start to clear that channel to your higher self. Okay then you can really begin to take the steps to find your true self, your authentic self and uncover your, your true divine purpose and mission here and what you really want to achieve in this lifetime. Because regardless of what stage you're at in life, you have a purpose um, and you can, you can move forward and accomplish anything from here on out. Even if you know, you're retired from, you know, your so-called so career, um, so many things that you can do now to create uh, the sacral chakra is all about creation. You can create the life you want. Um, so we talk about, um, you know, the emotions our inner child holds on to, but we have to confront them and to be able to say things that we haven't been able to, to express before. And it takes courage. It really does. You guys, it takes courage to delve into these emotions. I'm not going to lie. Those of you in the inner circle know, um, each month we focus on a different area and, um, you know, it was difficult in the beginning, but now who here in the inner circle can attest, you're already starting to feel lighter, right? Sometimes you find that inner child when you first reconnect is still angry or resentful and maybe reluctant to reveal these feelings to you and just know that that's okay. It takes time to repair that relationship. It may take repeated attempts for you to reconnect and repair that relationship to help them heal. So really think about that. You know, they've been holding on to some of these emotions for decades possibly right they've been trying to keep you safe and protect you <laughs> and they may be feeling scared now to let that go and to surrender okay that's been their job does that make sense to you guys those of you that maybe aren't 
you know, maybe newer to this whole concept of your inner child connecting with your sacral. Does that, is this making sense? All right, Anita says, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, hope, hopefully this is resonating with you guys. So as I keep saying, it's a lifelong process. You know, your, your journey doesn't end <laughs> after this work. We're always, we heal in layers, okay? So this activate process I'm teaching you is really good for maintenance. It's like the daily, it's like a tune-up, right? Each day to tune up your chakras. But if you have not delved into the deeper healing work of the deep clearing away and um, in this inner child work I'm talking about, I really highly recommend it because this activate process is great and it's going to be highly effective, but it's, it's like more of like maintenance. <laughs> Does that make sense? So you guys can still um, join us too. We are in the middle of a 21 day decluttering process. So we're not only healing releasing inner toxins from our emotions we're cl clearing toxins from our outer environment as well and um, it's amazing so we're only in week one of that so you can still join us i have that dollar trial still going on for a limited time so if you want you can email me or put a message below and after this video i'll get you information but um there's over i think there's almost 70 people in the inner circle now and those of you that did that four-part free series i did um almost 700 people signed up for that. Yeah. I think actually it may be closer to 800 now, but you guys, it's amazing. I was so surprised because when I started, um, you know, for the, I've been doing the healer with an academy for a couple of years now, and that's really focused on chakra healing and chakra balancing. And, um, when I started doing this work, my own inner child healing work deeper last year, working with the inner child oil, holy cow, you guys, idea started coming to me about creating that series. And then at the end of that series, there was such an amazing response. Ideas were coming to me in meditation about the inner circle and how to organize it and what topics to do each month. Once I started clearing deeper levels with my own inner child, ideas, like creative ideas started flowing through me. I was like, whoa, I didn't really realize this was a topic. I thought, you know, what I was doing with the chakras and then learning how to connect with our higher self. But then there was such an amazing response. It was such an aha for me. Um, how many people need this? And I know it's like the path to, to peace um, and contributing to peace in the world when we each take responsibility for healing our own inner child. So if you've been on the fence about it, you guys, I made it like as affordable as possible. It's just amazing. So I, I want to share that with as many people as possible. Okay, so let's get into it. So as you begin to clear and transmute any blocks in your sacral chakra that you're holding back, you will have a more balanced lifestyle focused on positive emotional expression of what you have to do, of what you're here to do. You'll have this greater flow of life force energy flowing through you and improving your immune system to help keep you healthy and active. Okay. Um, let me give you a couple other characteristics and I just want you to type yes. If um, think about how many of these you answer yes to. Okay. Do you have difficulty with touch, either being touched gently or being able to touch others? Like showing affection, physical affection. Do you have prob have you had problems with any of those physical um, areas I mentioned before? So the fibroids, um, endometriosis, ovaries, uh, menstrual problems, kidneys, bladder, lower back issues. And have you had any trauma or distress or a difficulty in your life between the ages of seven and fourteen? So those are the ages that really connect with our sacral chakra, things that happen. So maybe you went, parents divorced, you moved, loss of a loved one, any of these, um, any type of abuse, neglect, abandonment, any of these things between the ages of seven and 14, our inner child like locks in and stores away in this energy center. And we, it's tucked in our subconscious. So even if you, um, you may know something, happened or you have some vague memories um could be there um do you have difficulties with any part of your sexuality or sensuality being sensual do you feel that your creativity is blocked or that you're not a very creative person 
Do you believe that you are undeserving of pleasure and abundance? Do you tend to have a negative outlook about your body, your physical body and your appearance? Do you have an unhealthy balance of giving and receiving, either your time, your money, or your energy? Do you feel like somewhat obsessed with um, or really overly concerned about being thin, losing weight, or having a very good physical appearance? Do you allow energy to be drained in negative conversations or drama, dramatic, dramatic situations or events? Do you feel disconnected from your inner child? Or maybe do you don't understand quite, really quite understand who this part of you is? Or maybe you're afraid, you're tentative, uh, tent tentative to um, reconnect, hesitant to reconnect because of what you might discover. And then finally, do you tend to use harsh, like really just stick with harsh chemical medicines? Um, you know, always going for prescription drugs. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes we need that, but like solely, um, even the products that you use, cleaning products, beauty products, is everything for your health and well-being more like very traditional chemical based. You feel like that's right um, versus more complementary and energetically based therapies. All right. So let me see some of your responses. Okay. Some yeses. All right. Anita said my mom passed away at 10. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't realize that. Anita. And she got sick when I was five. Mm, yeah. So there's a lot of trauma there that, that you're holding at that, that age, that time period that can be affecting your sacral for sure. Um, not feeling creative. Um, Kathy said between seven and 14, yeah, weight loss, appearance, disconnected from inner child and hesitant to reconnect. Uh, Tammy said endometriosis not creative, feeling undeserving. Okay, you guys, I totally understand. I think many, um, many women, especially this chakra is one of the most important ones for us as, as, as women, um, just because of the implications it really has for our overall well-being, um, our vitality, our wellness, our creativity. So <laughs> now I want to talk with you about how we can restore this. So tonight we're getting ready right now to practice activate. And I forgot to make sure that you brought your oil. Did you guys bring your sacral oil? Um, it was on this chart I gave you. Actually, I think I have a photo. Let me see. So get your oils. Um, here's a photo that shows that page. Yes. So, um, I gave you that PDF download where you can read all the oils I recommend. So here's just a few. So again, some of these blends I'm going to read to you are the Young Living blends because that's that's the brand that I use and love. I really um, resonate with and have been attracted to for years and have found the greatest benefit from. And I love their harvesting practices and how they distill the oils. And I'm, I really consider myself an old soul. Does anyone else here think they're an old soul? And I think that's why I am also drawn to Young Living because they are one of the pioneers and the oldest brands of, of, of essential oils, um, therapeutic oils in this way. And that, I just like that. They've been around for 25 years and I just feel safe and trusting in their, their practices and the quality. I know I'm not going to get anything with chemicals and toxins and, you know, they're good stewards of the land and the environment and the farms they're in touch with. So all of that matters to me. So that's why I'll, I'll reference them, but please know you can use whatever oils you have and you like, and you love um, just make sure you do your due diligence and look for how they're grown and how they're harvested and all of those things I mentioned last week. Okay. So you got yours. You got yours. Which oil do you have tonight? Which oil do you have tonight? So here's some of the singles I recommend. You guys, one of the simplest and most inexpensive. Get your biggest bang for your buck. <laughs> Orange. 
Hello, it's the color of the chakra. Very inexpensive oil. If you want to, um, you know, invest in a big bottle of this, I use it for so many different things. Very um, uplifting to smell as well and just comforting. Okay, so we've got the other singles I'd recommend. Um, Ylang Ylang, beautiful scent. Sandalwood, geranium, orange, as I said, clary sage, neroli. Neroli is pretty expensive. It's right up there with rose um, as kind of like one of those coveted oils. <laughs> so it would be a, a pretty good investment if you want true, pure neroli. Um, and bergamot. Bergamot is awesome. I use bergamot with so many different blends. It blends nice with like more earthy oils like patchouli and cedarwood. Um, okay, so those are the singles. The blends, um, if you are a Young Living user, I know many of you here are, and many of you just got your new starter kits this uh, couple in the past week or two. So how exciting. Um, we have all these oils to balance your chakras and support wellness in mind, body, spirit, and emotions. Okay, peace and calming. Now, why do I love, why do I recommend peace and calming? Oh, well, one, it smells like heaven. <laughs> and this now is back in the new starter kit. So if you've been on the fence about getting one, this would be a good time because peace and calming is back. I would just, I want to see, look, at, I'm putting it up there for you to smell it because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you could smell it. Um, it's like heaven. This is what I use. I'm going to show you at the end tonight after activate how to just do the simplest bath salt mix. Um, I, I take it almost every single night. Peace and calming. Why do I recommend this for the sacral? Well, because it has a blend of tangerine, orange, ylang ylang, patchouli, and blue tansy. So it's got all those in it. It's beautiful. Oh my God. And then the other one, the other blend, probably my heart, in my heart, my favorite Young Living blend because of the healing I experienced, like transformation when I started using this. Healing my inner child, they have an inner child blend. And I have to tell you, that's what really, really put me over the edge when I was like, wow, with Young Living Oils, because I had been work done a lot of different work with Reiki and crystals and energy healing and all these things. And this one at last year, when I was really working with it at a deeper level, doing this process, I'm sharing with you tonight, all the ideas started coming to me. It was like, whew, my sacral chakra was opening. My inner child was healing. My creative ideas and expressions started flowing. I was like, holy crap, there's really something to this, <laughs> right? So I was combining it with affirmations and the chakra healing. And that's how the activate process came about. And those of you in the inner child inner circle, all these bundles, I give you every, each bundle and the topics we explore came from this work. Okay. So I can't speak highly enough about this. And then the, finally, the other blend I want to share, which is literally pure joy in a bottle is joy. Now I have to tell you, I didn't love Oh, wait, let me just tell you what's in the inner child, first of all. Why do I recommend that? Well, one, it's inner child. So that's where your sacral chakra is. It has orange, tangerine, ylang ylang, sandalwood. Hello. Do you see how many blends here for the, for the sacral are all in this? And jasmine. <laughs> and da -da 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 -da. neroli. You guys, all of them are in the inner child blend. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and it smells like absolute heaven. That and Peace and Calming are my two favorite ones. I mean, I just wear them as perfume. Okay, Joy. I have to be honest, I didn't love the smell of this one at first because it um, smelled a little like too perfumey. They're almost like the jasmine was like too much for me. But then after it mellows out, because it has ylang ylang, tangerine, bergamot, and rose in it that coveted rose. So when you can't afford maybe the pure rose bottle, you can look for blends that have it in it. That's what I do. So Joy um, has that in it. So all of those, so they have different effects on you. The inner child one is more like an emotional support system when you're healing your inner child and you're doing that inner child work, okay? Joy is gonna be more uplifting, right? It's gonna boost your mood. It's gonna bring you joy. 
Peace and calming, exactly what it says. It's going to make you feel more peaceful and calm. That's why I put it in my bath before bed at night. All right. So they all have a different type of effect. But again, if you don't have any of these and you're like, oh my God, I don't have any of these oils, just get orange. It's the it's inexpensive and it will help you heal and balance your sacral chakra. Okay, so which ones do you have tonight? Let me see in the comments. Okay, Kathy says, I have sweet orange. Awesome. Okay, Kathy Rivera says, Clary Sage. Oh, yummy. <laughs> Florence says, I feel like an old soul too. Yes. Uh, Anita has bergamot. Awesome, one of my favorites. Okay, and Courtney's got sweet orange. Awesome. Okay, you guys. So, and I told you last week, these are my recommendations for oils, but always you trust and follow your intuition, okay? When choosing oils, always above all recommendations or anything you read, okay? Trust your intuition. You could just close your eyes and ask for guidance and say, what oil do I need? What oil should I use today to help me restore balance to my sacral chakra? Okay, because what you might need may be different than what someone else needs at this time. Does that make sense? All right, so we're gonna do the activate process. Are you ready? Okay. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to read this, but I'm going to try to put this up. I typed up the steps for tonight. It might be very uh, <laughs> small print. Let's see. Which way is better? Not that way. No. Is that one better? Yeah, that shows the full screen. So I don't know. Can you guys even read that? I tried to create a photo image of the steps for you. Um, might be way too small. Just let me know. Can you even see that? <laughs> Just type yes or give me a thumbs up if that's helpful. I'm going to read it out loud so you can follow along anyways. And parts of it, your eyes are going to be closed. But uh, I'm going to do an overview of these steps right now. So just to review. All right. So here are the activate steps. I know you've been practicing it, but I'm just going to review these for you. Oh, and by the way, I want to let you know, I've had a lot of requests. Some people have sent me some emails and some private Facebook messages um, wanting these steps, wanting these typed up. And I do want you to know um, I am working out um, organizing these and typing these up. So at the end of the seven weeks, I am going to have an option opportunity for you to get these. I'm typing up these nice scripts. Um, I'm, I have some different ideas of how I'm going to organize that for you and how I'm going to have some different options for you, maybe with some short videos and some MP3s of me reading the scripts to you and the affirmations um, typed up as well. So you will have an option at the end of the seven weeks to get these. So I'm working that out and exactly what that's going to look like um, for those of you that are asking for it. Okay. Does that sound good? <laughs> All right. Oh, good. You can see it. Is that what the yeses are for? Oh, good. Oh, also, I'm going to show you. This is not an essential oil. So for those of you that are not familiar with, um, I always talk about the Green Hope Farm flower essences. They actually have an inner child. Inner child. Can you see that? Do, 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 do. inner child flower essence that I put in my water. That's what I'm drinking right now. Okay. So the flower essences don't have a, a aroma. Um, it has a neutral and they're not as potent. Essential oils are going to affect you like much more powerfully because they're the oil of the plant. They're more concentrated. These are the essence. So the plant's essence have been preserved in water and then you can take it internally. So it's, it's, it's still beautiful, um, healing and balancing, but it's much more subtle. All right. So there's an inner child flower essence from green hope farm. And I love that one. So I use that with the inner child oil. Okay. Oh, Colleen says, by the way, I love your meditation you sent by email. So beautiful. You're welcome. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I, I create so many meditations, Colleen. I think you're probably talking about the chakra balancing one. I'm glad you like it. I hope you use it. I hope you're using it regularly. Um, yes, I believe that's probably what you're talking about, the chakra balancing. 
meditation, that's that would be the one you probably get for me from email. But I create a lot too for the inner child, inner circle um, as well. We have different ones each month depending on what we're working on. Okay, you guys ready to start? So let me just review. Step one is ask A, okay? So please, again, I said it last time, but this, I copyright this information. What I create from my programs, the inner circle, the Healer Within Academy, um, this is a process I developed through just my own intuition and meditation. And um, so if you share this, if you share the other pages I gave you as well, um, just please keep it intact with my name and copyright on it. Just, you know, integrity, good karma there, all the good things. Some of you in this group I know are, are healers and you work with other people and you share this type of information. Um, so this activate process is a process um, that I may um, turn into some other things, programs and books eventually. Um, so yes, yeah, so please um, share where you got the information. Thank you. Okay, ask. A is ask. So step one, I'm just gonna review the steps and then we're gonna go through it and do it. So you say just a short little prayer. You're gonna ask. You can call upon whoever you want. You may call on different higher powers, um, different angels, depending on the chakra you're working on. God, your higher self, Jesus, whomever, again, you pray to, to help support you, support the clearing, the healing, the balancing of your sacral chakra for your greatest and highest good. And so it be, okay? Then you identify the current blocks. Now, you don't have to get into all the memories and rehashing everything. The way I do this, the way that we do the inner child healing work in, in the inner circle is much more on a subtle level, not traditional, you know, talk therapy where you have to go back and remember the memories. Okay. It's not necessary for healing. It's enough to know that it's there to identify these blocks and just set your intention that you're willing and ready to release and transmute them from all levels of your being. Okay. So current blocks, even though I may have some guilt, shame, frustration, or other emotions stored in my sacral chakra, I fully and deeply love and accept myself. Okay. Then you're going to touch or tap just below the navel. Okay. That area, that's your sacral area. So remember what I said last week, some of these are happening simultaneously now. So the as we start to say the current blocks, what I tend to do, these next three happen kind of at the same time. So current blocks, then I start to touch that area as I'm saying that. Um, you can move your hand. Again, remember, if you put your thumb towards your heart and you go around like this in a clockwise direction, that's the, that's the direction you want to move your, your hand in. Okay. Now, here with the touch, I want to add a little something. I want to tell you, for those of you that are Reiki practitioners, I just do this naturally because whenever I'm doing this, I'm doing energy healing, the flow of Reiki starts. If you're not a Reiki practitioner, you just intend, right? You can, you can even visualize like healing, white light, whatever, coming from your palm, helping you balance as you move in a clockwise direction, as you're touching that area. Now, when I say touch, remember, remember the photo I showed you, the chakras extend out in front of you and behind you. So when I say touch the chakra, your palm can be literally six inches in front of your belly. It doesn't have to be on your belly. We are using the oils at a subtle level. That means we don't need as much. We need, we're going to do one little drop. Okay. We're working in your subtle energy field. You guys got that? We're not working on your belly. All right. Then you're going to set your intention. What do you want to do for this healing? Even though and then as you're moving in a clockwise direction. So if you have Reiki, you can invite it in and do it here and just use that supportive. Move your hand and then state your intention, even though I may have all these emotions, restrictions, or blockages in my sacral chakra. I choose to release them from all levels of my being now. Okay? And you're just going to move your hand in a clockwise direction as you intend to release any blocks. And then you could put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And here's where you'll close your eyes and go within. And you will see the sacral chakra. Visualize that area just below your navel, extending out in front of you and behind you, going behind you as this vortex, this wheel of orange light, okay, spinning, balanced, vibrant orange, in a, spinning in a clockwise direction, all areas of darkness, 
all blockages are dissipating and dissolving completely now. And you can just see that in your mind's eye. If you're not good at visualizing, no worries. Just intend that it is happening. Okay, your intention trumps everything. Most important. Then, as your hand is on your heart and you're in this visualizing position, you can state your affirmation. If you have it memorized, you can just state it with your eyes closed or you can read it. I choose to free myself from all toxic emotions that I have been carrying now. I am open to receive pleasure and abundance in all areas of my life. I know that I deserve goodness, joy, and peace in my life. Just let those words, when you say the words, I want you to make sure you're saying them out loud. I don't know if I said that last week, but your words carry vibration, okay? Words are energy. They have frequency. So when you're saying that out loud to yourself, you're just embedding it more and more in your subconscious mind, okay? So it's working with the oil. Remember last week, I talked all about frequency. You're activating. You're activating the oil with your intention and your, your affirmation is amplifying it you guys this is so powerful all right then you're going to give thanks you're going to say thank you thank you for this healing whoever whomever you called upon thank you archangel gabriel my guardian angels i'm grateful for the support of these essential oils that were brought into my life they're nature's medicine to help me clear and balance my sacral chakra okay and then e the final step is an enhancement so you can carry a crystal. One of my favorites for the sacral is carnelian. I like this little point um, when I'm doing chakra balancing. I'll just rest it on that area when I'm laying down for meditation. You can carry a tumbled stone with you. There's lots of different other crystals for the for the um, tiger's eye. Is, tiger eye is also a good one. Um, but there's different um, orange calcite. Carry them, wear them, jewelry, or in meditation. So that's an enhancement. Enhancement is after you've done this process, you're going out about your day uh, and you're going to do some things to enhance it. The simplest thing you can do is to carry that affirmation with you and read it because affirmations only work when you do them repetitively. All right. Not just once in a blue moon. So especially right before you go to bed at night, have a little card on your nightstand. That's when your, your mind is most amenable to suggestion. So your inner child is going to be working, right? Your subconscious mind is working as you're sleeping. So you can tell it what to work on. You're going to be a responsible parent. You're going to direct it and say, give the affirmation, state your intention again for healing. All right. One of my other absolute favorite things to do to restore balance to the sacral chakra is a, a bath with essential oils and Epsom salts, because what is the element? What is the element? This is a quiz <laughs> of the sacral chakra. Type it in if you remember. Well, I take a drink. Okay. So what is the element? What's the element of the sacral chakra? Come on, type it. Who remembers? Yes, Kathy. Ding, ding, ding. First one. <laughs> Water. Okay. Um, so taking a bath, water is healing. Yes, if you have access to an ocean, salt water, incredibly healing for your sacral chakra. Okay. Salt water baths. I take one almost every night. I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not even exaggerating. So there's different ways when you take a salt water bath. I'm just going to share with you tonight the simplest that I do. When you're working on a, remember, I keep using this phrase, subtle energy. So when you're working on chakra healing and you want to take a bath with the intention of balancing your sacral chakra, or to me, baths really work well for the three lower chakras because um, it can help you release toxins. So you physical healing, you're going to use a little bit more. And then you might even incorporate some um, baking soda. I'm going to talk about that next week with the solar plexus, because we're going to talk about cleansing and detoxing next week, our digestive organs. Okay, but for this week, sacral chakra, my favorite. Now, I've done it both with inner child and peace and calming. But remember, you guys, what was in the peace and calming? Oh, my God. Now, 
heaven right here. Heaven in a bath. <laughs> Tangerine, orange, um, ylang ylang, patchouli, and blue tansy. <sighs> okay. Yes. I make these as gifts for Christmas. That's what I make in my salt water, my salt bath. Okay. So let me just show you real quick before we do the activate. You can get any Epsom salt. This one I just happen to have from um, Whole Foods. Um, I get them from CVS, whatever pharmacy you have. So you're just going to get that. And now let me just show you real quick um, what I do. Sorry, I got to reach here. I use mason jars. Because I, I mean, I'm serious when I say I do this every night. So you can have three sizes. You can have the smaller um, size, the medium one, or this is pretty much the one I use all the time, <laughs> the large size, okay? Um, because I use it so much. So if you want a more detoxifying, stronger one, like sometimes I will actually use this full thing, um, which I'll do, I'll talk about next week with the solar plexus. But for the most part, one of these will be enough for a bath. Okay, the smaller one. Um, what is this? The pint? I forget. You know, math wasn't my strength. That was a literacy. I'm a literacy coach. <laughs> I'm like pint, quart, gallon. All right. Anyways, so I think it's about two cups in this, which is perfect amount for just the traditional like subtle energy healing bath. So then you're just gonna. I fill it halfway. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to make a mess all over my desk, but I'm just kind of giving you a visual so you can see. So I'd fill it halfway with salt. And then I take my oil and I just add a few drops. Like really, if you're doing subtle energy bath, you only need like three drops, about three drops is usually what I put. Sometimes I add less, sometimes I add more, just depends. So then I'll add the drops and then I'll add more salt and I'll just leave a little space. Um, and then put the lid on. All right. This is so simple. You guys, it's all you have to do. Are you guys liking this? Is this helpful? I know you're probably like, all right, we're going to do the activate process. <laughs> and then all you do, so you're going to fill it halfway with salt, add your few drops, fill it up, leave a little space and then shake it good. Shake it. I shake it all. So all the salt gets absorbed because you know what? Oil and water don't mix. You guys know that, right? Basic science. So it'll mix, it'll absorb all in the salt. So then you just dump this in your running bath water. Um, and then it'll just infuse the water. The salt will melt into the water, um, dissolve into the water, and then it'll bring that oil, disperse it throughout your tub. Cool. Yes or yes. All right. <laughs> so simple. Lots of other different recipes I have. I'm just keeping it simple tonight, you guys. All right. So just get, oh, really important. When you buy Epsom salt, it doesn't matter what brand, just do not get scented, unscented. You want to use pure essential oils. Those brands that you think are mm, high end, look carefully at the back. I won't say the name, but I was using those for a while, a long time ago. And I said, fragrance oil. You guys, that is not natural essential oil. And I told you last week, if you have not seen the documentary Stink on Netflix, check it out. Because there's a lot of chemicals that fall under that term, fragrance. It's not natural. There's Okay? So get plain, fragrance-free Epsom salts when you do this. Okay, cool. Here we go. You guys ready? All right, I'm going to do it with you now. Remember, right before the activate, so pick your oil. You got your oil. What am I going to use tonight? You guys, I'm just going to keep it simple because I've done so much work with these blends. And after this, um, before bed, I'm going to do my peace and calming bath. So I'm going to just use orange. I'm going to keep it simple right now for my sacral chakra. So get your oil. So remember, the prepare phase is to get your oil Activate it in your palm before we start the A. All right, you ready? So just taking an inhale. Oh, you guys, as soon as you smell it, it can have a profound impact on your emotions. Again, I talked a little bit last week about the limbic part of our brain. Your sacral is connected to your emotions. Essential oils immediately impact. They have such a 
not only a physiological, but a psychological effect on us because they are the sense of smells, the, the what's connected to our limbic part of our brain, okay? <laughs> so it can immediately lift our mood and enhance enhance our emotions, okay? And support emotional healing. That's why there's actually science behind this, you guys. They're more than just some little smell good things in a bottle, <laughs> all right? Smell it, inhale. <sighs> Okay, then you're going to take one drop in your non-dominant hand. For me, that's my left. One drop. Ready? Boop. And some of the thinner, lighter oils, like citrus oils, they come out fast. You have to be careful. Okay, and then you're going to spin it around, rub it around three times to activate the molecules. Rub your hands together. And then we're going to take those three deep breaths in. Ready? And then imagine your breath sending healing energy with the oil to your sacral. Okay, again. And one more time. Mm, okay. And now I'm going to stand and you can stand with me. And I'm going to read the script so you can follow along. You can modify it as you'd like. I call upon God, my own higher self, and Archangel Gabriel to be with me to support the clearing, healing, and balancing of my sacral chakra for my greatest and highest good. And so it be. And you're gonna move your hand down just below your belly button. Even though I may have guilt, shame, frustration, or other emotions stored in my sacral chakra, I fully and deeply love and accept myself. Okay. You're going to spin like this, just out in front of your chakra, your sacral chakra, in a clockwise direction, setting your intention with motion. Even though I may have all of these emotions, restrictions, or blockages in my sacral chakra, I choose to release them from all levels of my being now. Now put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly, right over your sacral. It's perfect for this. Close your eyes. And visualize your sacral chakra open and balanced, a vibrant orange color, spinning in a clockwise direction. All restrictions, all areas of darkness and every block are dissipating and dissolving completely now. If you're not able to see that happening, just intend that it is happening now. And now repeat the affirmation. I choose to free myself from all toxic emotions that I have been carrying. I am open to receive pleasure and abundance in all areas of my life. I know that I deserve goodness, joy, and peace in my life. And put your hands in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, angels, archangels, and Archangel Gabriel, and my own higher self. I'm grateful for this healing and I'm grateful for the support of these essential oils, nature's medicine, to help clear and balance my sacral chakra. And so it be. You can take a deep breath in and out. And then the E is the enhancement, which I just described. Uh, can do any of the any of the recommendations. So 
How is that, you guys? How do you feel? Um, getting close. I'm running out of time here. So I'm going to wrap this up and I just want to see your feedback. How was that? Was that good? How do you feel? <sighs> Sometimes just the simple smell of plain orange is so uplifting. All right. I also want to make sure if you didn't get this last time, you can download my energetic protection meditation. Um, it's right on my website. Let me see if I can post this for you. Mm. I gotta find where my video is. All right, let me see, hopefully this will post. So you guys can listen to this. Remember, it's really important that once you open your chakras, um, before you go out for the day. Now you can listen and follow along to this meditation I just posted. Um, and once you listen to it a few times, you kind of get the idea, you get the process down. Then you don't need to actually listen to the guided meditation every day. You can just do a simple version of it where you um, call upon Archangel Michael or whoever you, whatever higher power you feel, or just, just intend this, this um, bubble of protective light flowing down um, through your crown, through your chakras, and surrounding your aura in seven layers of light, of protection. All right? So just very simple, but just make sure that you're protecting your energy field um, through that once you go out after you've activated your chakras. Um, another resource I want to share with you, um, actually, I'm going to give you all these inner child resources. I created a little... I put all things together on Amazon that I use and I have to credit, I don't, Michelle Fritz. I'm not sure if you're here. I didn't see your name tonight, but she shared this album with me. It's songs for the inner child. So when you go to this page, I'll post it for you here. Um, there are, there's an album that is so incredibly beautiful. So say you're going to take a bath with one of these oils and Epsom salts and you want some healing music on there is a songs for the inner child album in that little amazon page i just shared with you that is beautiful it's amazing and then also if you want any other essential oil resources of course i do not buy my essential oils on amazon but i use tools like um this is where i get the um like i'll buy like the b b bottles to make my blends and like labels and there's certain books on essential oils. So I'll give you that post as well. Let me just do that real quick before we end. Um, I have another page I put together for that. So these are um, oil resources. Whoops. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, all right. Hopefully, are you guys seeing these posts? Sometimes on this platform I'm on, I can't see if my things are posting. No, that didn't work. <laughs> Sorry. All right, hold on. I'm almost done. All right, hopefully. All right, well, hopefully you got it. Anyways, all right, so I'm glad. Thank you for being here tonight. Again, remember, show up every week. One of you are going to get, um, three of you, not one of you, three of you are going to get um, the pack, the set of chakra stones, set of my affirmation cards for all seven chakras, and the energetic protection spray with um, white angelica and frankincense. Um, so show up or watch the replay. If you're watching on the replay, just comment so I know you are here. Next week, you guys. This week it's spring. Is it tomorrow? Wait, is it tomorrow? No. Yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> I'm like, what day is spring? I guess technically Wednesday. Um, so you guys know a lot of people are going to start talking about cleansing and detoxing. You're probably already seeing it. I always try to do a more deeper, you know, cleansing spring and fall. Those are really two good times. So in spring, you're probably going to be likely going to be bombarded this week and the next couple of weeks with like ads and, you know, all these different things from people promoting cleanses and detox programs. And a cleanse can really be a great way 
to renew your sense of health and well-being and really boost your energy and vitality if you do it correctly, um, they really can be transformational. And I'm not teaching a specific cleansing. I'll share with you some tips and ideas, of course. But the reason most cleanses fail is because they don't really go deep into the subtle level, the layers of the body and the mind, right? Remember, I keep talking all about our subtle energy. Change has to happen there first. People try to, you know, make dietary changes or do cleanses from their willpower, and they try to force it on a physical level and change their physical body. And that approach doesn't really bring about lasting change. You might have temporary, immediate changes, but you kind of fall back into these old <laughs> patterns. So, anyways, in order to effectively like really reset ourselves, we have to clear our subconscious mind, and that's what we're doing. So, as you do this activate process this week for your sacral chakra, you are going to start healing your inner child of these toxic emotions and other restrictions. And that's where the change has to happen first before you start to see it in your physical environment, your physical body. Does that make sense, you guys? So next week, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that because the solar plexus is connected to our digestive organs. So there's a lot of um, little tips that I will share for balancing your solar plexus that'll also support a, a spring cleaning, a spring cleanse, if that's something you want to do. All right. Sound good? So I uh, thank you for being here tonight, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you jo jo joined in late, this is ending right now. It will be posted in the group. Watch the replay. Make sure you comment whether you were here live or on the replay, so you get a chance to win this one of the goodie bags. Three people. Um, now, go enjoy a bath <laughs> tonight with your oils if you have uh, some Epsom salts. So, okay, good. Let me see some of your comments just before I go. You're welcome. You're welcome, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Uh, okay, good. Courtney, Courtney said it made me feel lighter. Awesome, yes. You're welcome, Colleen. Okay, you're welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. And I will um, please share any um, feedback, anything, how, how you're feeling with your activated sacral each morning this week. So please do it each day for seven days. You'll get the greatest benefit. And then next week, we'll focus on the solar plexus. Sound good? Okay. Awesome. Have a great night, everyone. I will see you soon. Bye for now.